Hey, Mr. Shapiro, uh, long time listener, second time question asker. Um, okay. <laughs> so I live just outside of Madison, mm -hmm. and during the Women's March a couple Saturdays back, I think like 75,000 to 100,000 people uh, were down there marching, and I understand it's a very abstract reason why that occurred. Um, so after that happened, I was very interested to listen to your podcast about the Women's March and what you had to say. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I thought was um, interesting and kind of concerning to me is just like the rhetoric that you tend to use and you do it along with a lot of other conservative mm -hmm. uh, personalities like Crowder and all them. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very vengeful of this group called the left. And I, being, um, I know a lot of people that were down there in the marches and not all of them are even considered the left. I'd say a lot of them are apolitical and they mm -hmm. just kind of wanted to know what's going on. And I just seem to um, notice that a lot of what you guys were saying kind of in general seemed to demonize the entire group as just this very terrible, um, I guess, planned I out maniacal group. And I just wanted to say, don't you think that kind of um, ostracizes people in the middle, just kind of how the Women's March itself kind of ostracizes people? I mean, sure. Uh, I think that when it comes to the women's march, the reason that I declared it a leftist march is because if you actually look at their list of goals, they are all to the left. I mean, it was universally. It wasn't like they were marching for, you know, for housewives. I mean, what they were, they were marching for was, was I mean, they, they tried to ban people who are pro-life from the women's march, right? There are plenty of women who are pro-life, like half of them. And, and they, they basically banned that. So, you know, it was, it was a left-leaning march, no question about it, which is why the press was so excited about it. You know, as far as the idea that that is, is labeling everybody in the march, well, as I say, I think that it was sort of random why a lot of people showed up. And, you know, it, when, when, you're, when you talk politics all the time, you have to use shorthand because otherwise you're going to spend every day 10 minutes at the beginning saying, now when I say the left, I don't mean everybody who's ever gone to a party with a leftist. Now, when I say when I say the rally, I don't mean everybody who's ever been at a rally. When I say the women's march, I don't mean every single person who's at the women's march. Okay, I assume that if you disagree with what I'm saying about the left, then you're at the women's march for a different purpose. But there's no question that the organizers of the women's march were very much to the left and very open about it, and that a lot of it was driven by ire at Trump, and a lot of it was driven by this this notion that abortion is going to magically disappear because of Trump, uh, and and all the rest of it. So. That, hence, hence the language. Also, I have to say that a lot of the a lot of the optics that were coming out of the women's march were laughable. I mean, when when you're walking around wearing a pussy hat, <laughs> and then suggesting that this is somehow going to remove Donald Trump from office. <laughs> Sorry, if there's one thing we know about Donald Trump, it's that if he sees a <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I would agree with probably 100% of what you just said. That's just what I kind of see <laughs> from, you know, just watching conservative media that it seems like, you know, the, America's divided right now. Yeah. But, and I just always want to picture conservatives conservatives and conservatism to just rise above it and just not try to be as split. Well, but yeah, and, and, and listen, and if, if there are common principles that I hold, uh, then I state them. I mean, I think I've been pretty honest about President Trump and candidate Trump. Um, I, you know, I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I didn't vote at the top of the ticket because I was so off-put by, by candidate Trump. I, he, didn't, he didn't meet my baseline of, of who should be president, and neither did she, so I just skipped it, um, which you know, felt fine at the time. But in any case, the, you know, as far as, as far as Trump goes, I'm happy to find common ground with people when they're right. I'm not happy to find common ground with them when they can't define themselves or they're wrong. So, you know, when, when Trump does something bad, uh, then I'm, I'm happy to, to call him out. And obviously, I'm more than happy to mock him because I'm happy to mock all politicians. So. Thank you. Thanks.